have a hard time with a black woman over 200 pounds tell the truth because people that look like us <laughs> we should just be grateful we got invited to the party she said she saw oprah when she was a child and she wanted to be famous like all the big people on tv but when she saw oprah specifically she thought wow i can be an ugly fat black big-headed bigfoot woman and make it her words not mine so a big woman with a big head big shoulders and big feet fame comes at a cost Monique didn't match that. She did not measure it. She did not check it out. She didn't. She just wanted it. For everything that you seek, you have to give up something. All we're asking is to weigh if what you're giving up is worth what you get in return. I like big butts and I cannot lie. Uh, that's what Monique said. It wasn't me. Monique said that. Okay. And Well, she didn't really say it like that, but that's what I heard in her head. I'll be saying that a lot, so just understand I'll be doing that a lot today with this one. I'm going to be telling you what I heard in her head because that's the going thing now. It's the thing to do. Uh, Monique sat down with Shay Shay. Shay Shay, man. Shay Shay. Uh, the tight pants man. I know he knew who I'm talking about. Shay Shay. We solidified who he is. We know what, what show she on. That's the last I'm going to talk about Shannon because what she said completely takes the whole show off of Shannon and, and, and put it on her. Now, now, y'all might be some Monique fans. I get it. She exposed Oprah and she's backing up Kat. No pun intended on that last statement. Okay, because what I'm about to say, you might think what I said was a pun, but it, it really wasn't. She was backing up Kat, but she started off the interview backing up Kat. And I really mean that. Like, literally, she did. She, she started off the whole show. Back it up, Cat. Everything Cat Williams sat here and said, right. we all know it to be the truth. So it, it, uh, at the onset of the interview, you know, the, the whole interview surrounds around drinks, right? So each get a drink. And as they talk, they sip, you know, Cat was really sipping on. He was really, he's, but, but Monique took the first sip and uh, she, she sipped it. And then she, she got into a space, I guess, that was a little bit private. Um, she looked at the camera and said, now, ladies, if you want to get pregnant and really impress him or apologize to your man, this is the drink for you. It'll get you there. Oh, sisters, if you're trying to make up with your man, if you're trying to get pregnant, this right here, Shannon Sharp, <laughs> one sip, take your own woes. Ooh, baby, that thing right there. Now, if, if you are a, if you're a married woman, okay, don't follow Monique's example. I'm just asking you not to. Don't go on someone else's show, especially a dude that looks like Shannon. And you being the size that Monique is, y'all can do the math for yourself. And then proceed to take a drink and suggest that the drink made you a little bit aroused. That Don't do that. That's bad advice. Don't do that. She might have said, do it to your husbands, but she was doing it to somebody that wasn't. Just so you know. That's the first thing. Now, I'm going to be breaking down piece by piece because, and it, this is not going to be the only video we make about this. It was a three hour interview, shy five minutes, three hours. We noticed a few things and we couldn't just say we're going to respond to the whole thing in one. It is too much to just be one and done. So we're going to break it up. This is part one, if you want to call it that. That was the first thing we noticed that she kind of went off the rails right off the top. And I don't know whether it's pandering, flattering, or just playing up to the camera. We don't even know. Because by the end of the first segment that we're going to cover, we were thoroughly confused as to what exactly the interview was supposed to be about. Somewhere in about the three-minute mark, a certain individual popped up because she said she couldn't go forward with the interview unless she addressed this. Because everybody knows that there was a massive blowout between Shay and Skip Bayless, right? Some time back, this whole reason that club... Shay Shay is around is because of that blow up with, you know, the man. So Skip apparently had lost his mind. That's what she said. Stepped out of himself. The day I watched Skip Bayless okay. lose himself with you. And that's what he did. He lost himself. To address Shannon and what she said. Remember I said that, you know, she was, you know, the, the statement I made. I heard it in her head. She said that, that Skip Bayless so, said to, to Shannon, Put them GD glasses back on your head, boy. And when I watched Skip Bayless say to you, put them goddamn glasses back on, boy. Now, she later said, 
Now, that's not what he said, but we all heard it. Now, I know he didn't say goddamn and boy, but that's what everybody heard. And I was now normally that would be that you're hearing voices. But she went one step further and said she heard it in his head. Now, I know people like Umar say that they get visitations all the time, but this is way past visitation. You can hear somebody else's thoughts that you ain't even around through the TV post event. That's that's impressive. So she instantly made it about race. Now, when you go back and listen to what Skip actually said and look at what was happening, the reason Skip said, put your glasses back on was because what he was really telling Shannon was this. We're not going to fight. You're taking off your glasses like we're about to throw hands. We're not about, man, just put your glasses back on. Wait a minute. What are you talking about? You would take a personal... Put your glasses back on. Can I finish? You're willing to take a personal shot at me. Now, everybody can talk about Skip as though he's an a-hole. He is. I ain't going to sugarcoat that. Skip might not be the easiest person to work for. But when you watch the interview between the two of them, Shannon lost it first. Shannon went full female first, okay? So so Monique did not hear what she heard, but she came there with a planned agenda to push something that never took place for a basis that never happened. Skip never used the word boy, and he was not racially charged when he said it. But for the rest of this interview that she did with Shannon, everything was about black or white. Everything. The reason she can't get a job, she black and fat. The reason she can't get a, 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 more money, she black and fat. And this is her statement, not mine. People have a hard time with a black woman over 200 pounds. Tell the truth. Because people that look like us, mm -hmm. we should just be grateful. We got invited to the party. She said she saw Oprah when she was a child. And she wanted to be famous like all the big people on TV. But when she saw Oprah specifically, she thought, wow. I can be an ugly, fat, black, big-headed, bigfoot woman and make it? Her words, not mine. I didn't call Oprah that. Now, back in the day, Too Strong might have used those words, but that wasn't me. Big head, big feet, big nose. Fat. And when I looked at that woman, Shannon, I saw me. I saw a big woman with a big head, big shoulders, and big feet. Now, my second question about the whole interview is this, with that statement. If you're a little girl watching Oprah, and you aspire to be overweight with a big head and big feet, you have more problems than the rest of the world can solve. You didn't aspire to anybody else to be slim, healthy, and rich. No, you had to be fat, ugly, and rich. That was your aspiration, not mine, not anyone else's. Those were her words. Aspirations to be like Oprah. Then she said, well, even if Oprah wasn't on, I would have still wanted to be rich. I wanted people to scream for me. Had I not seen her, I would have still wanted to do it. But seeing her, let me say, okay, it's possible. Now, with that statement, it makes sense why she said what she said next. Because if that's how you see yourself, anything you do will make sure that you separate how you view yourself from the audience. So what do you do? You make a persona. And she admitted to such. She admitted that she prayed to the universe. Sorry, let me make sure I, I say it in the proper term and the proper way because she was throwing that cat. She prayed to the universe for her to get an actual job being a rich, black, big-headed, bigfoot woman. Just like Oprah. But I knew somewhere I was going to be famous. Right. So I prayed to the universe only later, of course, to be hurt by that big-headed, big-foot woman. Then to throw said big-foot, big-headed woman under the bus because the big-headed, big-foot woman didn't help you out enough. Fame comes at a cost. Monique didn't match that. She did not measure it. She did not check it out. She, didn't, she just wanted it. But when fame bit her in the butt, then she got mad. She got upset because the person that she was striving to be like got there by illegal means, by immoral means, by all kinds of means that she did not want to go about, she says. But judging from the beginning of the, 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 the interview, I think she did a little bit more to get where she was. That's just my opinion. Maybe she can read my thoughts and see what I actually said. But if at that young age you aspire to be obese, 
in order to be rich, something else is going on in your world. Now, I'm sure she's probably has some kind of history of people being mean to her and calling her names and all that kind of stuff. And it played a, a, a part in her wanting to keep that image so she can embarrass him when she did get famous. But if fame is all you wanted and you got it, why are you still complaining? This is directly to you, Monique. Why are you still complaining? Okay, so you may not be as big as Oprah. And I don't mean in terms of size. You may not be as big as Oprah. But everybody knows you now. Why are you not satisfied? Why is it that you need more? More, more, more. I need to be bigger, faster, strong. I need to be more seen. I need to be bigger than the next person, richer than the next person, more known than the next person. Because the cost of fame is way higher than any of us can actually pay out. It's way bigger. She just didn't weigh it out. She did not calculate the cost. And now she is here, wanting to be rich, wanting to get paid more, wanting to be seen. She even went so far to say that she has two different personalities. It, now, this is what I heard her say in her head. Um, she has two personalities. She has split personalities, one for the stage and one for interviews. And you will never hear her say anything in an interview that she wouldn't say on stage. Unless, of course, she's flirting with Shannon Sharp. And that's different. That's completely different. That, that don't, Husband, don't listen to that part. I, I don't mean nothing by it. I'm just, I'm being M-O hyphen Neek. I'm not being M-O Neek, Okay. Because that's how she separates herself, apparently, by the spelling. If she has the hyphen, that's her stage per version. If she don't have the hyphen, that's her regular version. When I'm not on stage, my name is M-O-N-I-Q-U-E. When I'm on stage, it's M-O, the low hyphen, N-I-Q-U-E. On stage, is one person. Off stage, is somebody different. At this point, we can't be sure which version is interviewing. Because she keeps going back and forth between her famous self and her not famous self. Her home self and her stage self. You know why that is? Because they're all one in the same. One seeks validation from the family. One seeks validation from the world. Monique doesn't know who she is. That's the biggest problem here. In searching for fame, in searching for everything that everybody else has, you lose yourself. If you ever had it to begin with. Because at the onset, if your entire goal as a child is to be somebody else, you will never find you. It is not going to happen. You're going to end up being miserable the rest of your life because you've never really fulfilled anything. You've pursued somebody else's dream. Every kid say, I want to be a superhero or I want to be a, this when I grow up. And at some point, reality sets in where it's not that you can't do it, but one, is it feasible and is it actually going to feed my soul? But then again, if you pray to the universe, I guess anything's plausible for you. The price of fame that Monique paid, she all of a sudden now is regretting. But you picked this from a young age. You said that. And now you're coming to tell everybody the price you paid, that you chose to pay. But now all of a sudden you're upset that the price you paid didn't end up the way you were hoping. No one guaranteed you that. Reminds me of another big artist that went up and spoke about some stuff. No one's guaranteeing you anything. So what you get, you got. You got more than most. In any way, the interview continues to go on. And this is, mind you, this is only 13 minutes in. This much drama, 13 minutes in. There's still a whole two hours plus to go. We'll cover the rest. But when you hear what the rest has to do with, I know people who want to harp on, well, what did she say about that artist? What did she say about this person? Did she spill the bean? Did she name names? Just like the Cat Williams interview, of course, everybody wants to know some sort of juicy gossip behind what. But what good is the gossip if the person giving you the beans and giving you all the juicy stuff doesn't even know where they are? What, what happens then? What happens if what they're giving you is also shaded and jaded by their own experience of who they are. I think you'll find that more and more with Monique when the interview goes on. When you hear the rest of it, 
I mean, those who are fans will still be fans. I'm not going to say it's going to change your mind because you probably knew most of this about Monique anyway. Those of you who are fence riders, you're probably going to fall on the side of, I still want to know more about Monique. And those of us who are well aware of the dangers of seeking fame will be like, man, that's a sad and tragic story. What Too Strong is simply trying to expose to people is this. For everything that you seek, you have to give up something. All we're asking is to weigh if what you're giving up, understand this, if what you're giving up is worth what you get in return.